Amongst today's forgotten 80s TV gems on Stuview TV, we've got Wild West Antics in the north of England, Dirty Harry played for laughs, and a theme tune that will bring a nostalgic tear to your eye. His soul, he planned a town that bears this name. Apache Wells, Apache Wells. From the Black Hills to the coast, it's the place that has the most. It's the rootinest, rootinest, cutinest town that you ever saw. Let's begin today's nostalgic journey through the world of 80s television with a visit to the Wild West of Lancashire. First broadcast on BBC Two in September 1984, this forgotten sitcom gem follows the fortunes of Percy Call Me Jesse James and his wife and daughter who run a Wild West visitor attraction called Apache Wells which attracts people from all walks of life who are eager to live out their best Western fantasies. With a fine cast led by Kenneth Cope as Percy, a unique premise for a sitcom and plenty of laughs, it's a shame that this enjoyable comedy didn't catch on with audiences at the time. With no commercial release on DVD and a total lack of repeat showings, Bootle Saddle seems destined to be forgotten forever. Based on the novel by best-selling author Tom Sharp, farcical drama Blot on the Landscape ran for six one-hour episodes on BBC Two during February and March 1985. The brilliant cast included George Cole as the devious and sleazy MP Sir Giles Lynchwood, Geraldine James as his eccentric wife Lady Maud, David Suchet as the mysterious gardener Blot, Julie McKenzie as Sir Giles' mistress, Mrs. Fourthby, and Simon Cadell as a civil servant from the Ministry of the Environment. With the help of Gardner Blot, a secret anarchist, Lady Maud will do anything to stop Sir Giles' plan to run a new motorway through the grounds of her ancestral home. Blot on the Landscape is available on DVD. If you were a child of the 80s, then prepare to be swept away on a wave of nostalgia and maybe even shed a happy tear. I'm the storyteller and my stories must be told. I have many stories, tales for both the young and old. I have many voices to describe many places Many names have I and many faces In Russia I am Ivan, in Sweden I am Jan In Germany I'm Johan, in England I am John from my many travels I have gathered these tales To teach you good sense when all else fails Sometimes there are tears, sometimes there is laughter But always a happily ever after As cosy as a warm blanket on a winter's night, that gentle theme tune alerted children across the land that another traditional folk tale was about to be told on Storybook International. As the title of the series would suggest, the stories told in Storybook International were gathered from around the world, traditional folk tales that had been enjoyed by generations. With an unseen narrator acting as the storyteller, the words were brought to life with live-action scenes that were actually filmed in the countries that the tales were set. Locations included Turkey, Russia, 
India, Spain, Romania, Canada, China and many more. Although it would probably be regarded as old-fashioned today, Storybook International was both captivating and comforting. They really don't make them like this anymore. Staying with children's television, here is the rather more chilling intro to the fantasy drama Into the Labyrinth. First broadcast in 1981 and running for 21 episodes, Into the Labyrinth starred the great Ron Moody as ancient sorcerer Rothko, who has for centuries been locked in battle with evil witch Belor, played by Pamela Salem, over possession of the Nidus, an object of ultimate power. With Belor sending the Nidus back through time and space, Rothko enlists the help of three children, who travel to different periods of history in order to retrieve it. In each time period they come across earlier incarnations of Rothko. Into the Labyrinth was released on DVD, but, just like the Nidus, is not easy to find. Robert Powell first played the heroic Richard Hannay in the 1978 film version of John Buchan's novel The 39 Steps. The 1988 television spin-off Hannay acted as a prequel, with the title character getting involved in dangerous adventures in Edwardian Britain. Each week Hannay would find himself in a desperate life or death situation with seemingly no way out, but every time he managed to miraculously escape. All 13 episodes of Hane are available on DVD, with some also available right here on YouTube. Nobody could play suave and sophisticated quite like the late, great Peter Bowles. First broadcast on ITV in 1985, Lytton's Diary featured Peter as the title character Neville Lytton, a newspaper gossip columnist who makes it his mission to expose the crooked and the corrupt in society, from high-powered tycoons to gangs of skinheads. Despite an excellent performance from the ever-fine Peter Bowles, Lytton's Diary came to an end after just 12 episodes. Rick Waitman, who provided the theme tune for Lytton's Diary, believes the series' early demise was due to it being disliked by Fleet Street, unhappy at some of their more underhand methods being exposed. Lytton's Diary is available on DVD. One of the most beloved British TV stars of the 1970s, the popularity of comedy great Richard O'Sullivan was still on a high by the time the 80s rolled around. In 1984 he was cast as widower Simon Harrop, an advertising executive who has been a single dad to daughter Samantha since she was three years old. The wonderful Joan Sanderson was Simon's formidable mother-in-law Nell, while goodies legend Tim Brooke Taylor played Simon's brother-in-law and fellow advertising executive Derek, who seems to live in constant fear of his unseen wife Muriel. Proving popular with viewers, Me and My Girl ran for an impressive 52 episodes from 1984 to 1988. Copies of Me and My Girl on DVD are now hard to find. Despite only 8 episodes being made, 
US TV series Manimal is now regarded as a bit of a cult favourite. Debuting in the United States in 1983, Manimal was first broadcast in the UK on BBC One in 1984. Starring the late British actor Simon McCorkindale, Manimal told the story of Jonathan Chase, a university professor who had the ability to transform into any animal he chose. Using this extraordinary ability to help the New York Police Department fight crime, Chase was aided by his assistant Ty and female detective Brooke, who were the only people who knew of his shape-shifting abilities. The effects used to transform Chase from human to animal were pretty decent for the time, and still hold up fairly well today. Unfortunately, this was an expensive process, so sometimes the same effects were used on more than one occasion. When broadcast in the US, the series was up against the mighty Dallas, resulting in poor ratings for Manimal, which ultimately led to the series' swift demise. Manimal is available on DVD. An underrated gem of 80s American TV comedy, Sledgehammer was a riotous spoof of Clint Eastwood's Dirty Harry films. Title character Sledgehammer even uses a 44 Magnum, a gun which has its own satin pillow. David Rashi plays Detective Inspector Sledgehammer, a Los Angeles cop who shoots first and asks questions never. Said by the city mayor to make Rambo look like Pee Wee Herman, Hammer, whose catchphrase is, trust me, I know what I'm doing, blunders his way through cases which are usually solved by his younger partner, Dory. First broadcast in the United States in 1986, Sledgehammer made its debut on British television in 1987. Punch yourself in the mouth. What? You heard me, punch yourself in the mouth. Right now, it's an order. Oh, come on. Harder than that. I'm, otherwise, I'm going to do what I'm telling you. Oh. All right, that was nice. Now slug yourself in the stomach. All right, look, I'm running out of time. Uh, just finish yourself off. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Part children's sci-fi adventure and part quiz show, the unique Captain Zepp space detective was first shown on the BBC in 1983. Each episode saw the young studio audience trying to solve a space set mystery, which had been played out in the first half of the show. In the first series, the part of Captain Zepp was played by Paul Greenwood, most famous for playing the title role in the gentle police-based sitcom Rosie. For series two, Greenwood was replaced by Richard Morant. Viewers at home also got the chance to get in on the action by answering two questions about that week's episode, with the opportunity to win a Solve Badge at stake. And Solve Badges for you students at home, if you can answer these questions. When is a vase not a vase? And what did the heat sensors indicate? Tricky him? Well, I warned you to watch carefully. See you next week for The Plague of Santos. Bye, and remember, stay alert. Which of the shows mentioned in today's video do you remember watching back in the 1980s? Are there any that you would happily still watch today? Do please let me know in the comments. As always, many thanks for watching and do join me next time for more nostalgic goodness.